This is not good. Hidden treasure, a hidden corpse, and very visible phantoms await us in Kent. I've brought my team to Kent and to the very haunted Boys Hall. The hall was originally built in 1616 by the Dubois family, who landed in England from France at the time of the Norman Conquest. Over time, their name was anglicised through Boys to Boys. The house is said to be a portal through which many spirits journey in order to revisit the living. Numerous sightings and sounds are reported of ghostly children, music playing, a large jovial spirit of a man making merry, a dog from the netherworld, tales of unrequited love and much poltergeist activity. The current very grand Jacobean mansion was completed in 1632, incorporating materials from a Saxon manor house belonging to the convent of St. Augustine. The hall boasts priest holes, oak panelling, beamed ceilings and many strange stories. With such a diverse history, no wonder Boys Hall is said to be haunted. So the big question is, who should spend the night alone and in the dark here? Well, our two volunteers this week just had to be myself and Carl, and this is what happened. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm shaking. Yeah. Deadly quiet, isn't it? Mm. If I whistle, can you whistle back? <whistles> what? What? I swore I see like a black shape in the mirror. What? Something just touched my heart. Did it, did it, did it. Something just like went. Should we get back in here? Yeah. What? 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 Don't, don't, Something what? Something just touched my hair. Something just. I need to get out of here. No, now. no, no. Just chill, chill, chill. What touched your hair? What touched I your hair? I don't know, but can we just. What? What? I'm scared, aren't you? Oh, I feel a lot better when everybody else is here tomorrow. Come on. Having only spent a brief time in the house, I already had serious misgivings about the coming investigation. In its day, this stable block would have been the centre of equestrian activity, but now its only inhabitants are memories and ghosts. A dark, imposing shadow, thought to be an old stable master, has been seen and heard wandering around this empty stable block many times. And people have also witnessed the smell of tobacco. My experiences of living at Boys Hall range from watching the television one evening and the door handles rattling and the, and the cupboard doors swinging open and shut to seeing somebody run past the door of the reception. I also saw what I believe was the ghost of a dog on the stairwell at the top of the house. Um, and generally lots of noises, music box playing in my bedroom, lots and lots of different things. My first impressions today when I arrived was pleasant. Um, a beautiful house and beautiful gardens. It wasn't until I started to go up the stairs that I felt uncomfortable. A sense of frustration. Children were crying for help. They were punished by being put in cupboards. And it wasn't until I went to the other end of the house and picked up a female energy that that was where the frustration was coming from.
There is a tragic story that is said to be the basis of one particular haunting that echoes through the hall. After being seduced by an Irish dandy, Ellen Scott's fiancé, William Boys, attacked and murdered the would-be suitor in a fit of jealousy. Being totally unaware of this tragic act, Ellen finally agreed to marry William. The newlyweds left Boys Hall not to return for almost nine years. It was upon Ellen's return that our story takes a gruesome twist. It is said that something or someone encouraged her to look under the floorboards in the lumber room. As the wooden boards were lifted, the skeleton of a lady dressed in the Irishman's clothing became visible. It was Tracy. It was clear that the two women were lovers. As the skull was lifted from the body, a bullet fell to the floor. Ellen quickly picked it up and ran to the window to see if there were any markings on it to link the murder to her husband. What happens next remains a mystery. All we know is that she fell from the window and died. Was she pushed? Did she fall? Or did she jump? We do not know. But they are both said to haunt the hall on a regular basis. So imagine being here in the dining room at night. And, as has happened so many times, the doors start to rattle in their frames, the handles slowly rotate, the doors fly open to reveal the ghostly figures of our two phantoms, each trying to find the other. When we first moved in, we hurriedly unpacked our boxes and uh, we hung um, some porcelain, Victorian porcelain jelly moulds on the kitchen wall. And while I was in another part of the house, two of my friends were in the kitchen having a break, having a coffee. And the porcelain jelly mould had been hanging on the wall for a couple of days by then. And in front of them, it flew off the wall and hit the wall opposite and smashed. So that was the first experience in this house. The most recent one was actually at 3.30 this morning. And that was a scratching on the inside of the panelling in my bedroom, behind my head. And that's the second night it's happened, at 3.30 on the dot. So I've been up since 3.30 because it just didn't stop, so I'm, I thought I might as well get up. This Jacobean Hall has been the scene of many gruesome events in its 360-year history, and many of the ghosts here don't seem to be very friendly. This area by the stairs is a favourite haunt of two particularly negative spirits. A strong poltergeist presence has been witnessed here that likes to move objects and dish up fear with trepidation in equal measures. And an entity that chillingly calls itself the house. Is this entity the very soul of Boys Hall? We have 24 hours to find out. how he was feeling about the prospect of investigating Boys Hall. Now, for me, this is a really exciting location because it's somebody's home. And we don't really get the chance that often to do an investigation in someone's home, do we? So how do you feel about that? Well, I'm ex equally excited about this place because it is a veritable museum of phenomena. There's so many different things that have happened here. Auditory phenomena, physical stuff, temperature drops, animal sensing things, you've got photographic and artistic evidence of stuff, so it's just such an exciting place and it holds a lot of potential. As I mentioned earlier on, there's a tragic story connected to the house and a lot of people have seen the ghost connected, or supposedly connected, um, with this story. Does that intrigue you? It does interest me for two reasons. Number one, the supposed apparition that's seen actually in the dining room behind us, uh, kind of an orange figure, and it's said to be that main female character in the story. So that interests me, and hopefully somebody will actually see that or will pick it up on film. The other part of it is that it's such an intricate and tragic story. There's a lot of detail to it, and hopefully it's the sort of thing that David will pick up on, and I'll be quite impressed with that. The time had come for David Wells to begin his initial scrutiny of the location. One instant she wants to kill. Oh, I feel, now I feel sucked. She's kissing it. So she's kissing the skeleton's face. Basically, I'm saying here that there's ghosts who are scared of the ghosts. It's almost like something's pulling me. She, she's saying to me, a bullet to the back of the head. <laughs> As 
David began his exploration of the hall, he had an immediate impression of an immense energy. There's a don't know how it's going to react kind of feel Ooh. to this one. Um, it's like an energy, but, but it's movable. It moves around. Like, better analogy might be it's like a tornado. Right. And it moves around. And it's, it's present observing. here at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, usually, usually when I come across energies like this, they're um, attached to the ground and they're ancient. Do you know those kind of like been here for centuries? We, we've come across some of them before when they're ancient and it feels protective of the space so rather of the than house. the house. Of the house, yeah. But it's, it's kind of like... You know, we have, we have guides and we have angels and we have mm. all sorts of things. It's kind of like it's attached to the space for some reason. So it must go back to what was here. It's not... It's the space, it's not necessarily the house, but the house is on the ground, therefore it gets it. Right. There's one, there's one strong presence in here, and he's a, he's a very round man. Any um, name with him? The, the first name that immediately comes to your head, my head is John, but he's coming down here to get booze. He likes a drink. He's a bit... Got the big nose. Yeah, got the, so the red, the red yeah. bit about him. He's very... I don't know if he actually had that. It's just making me think he drinks. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost like he's, he's coming down from drinks like this. You know, it's like... You know, he's like staggering about, he's trying to get to them and, you know, so he's obviously likes a few... And he's active here? He's active in the house, yeah. In the house? Yeah. Likes a very social creature. I want to sit down here and I want to... I want you to sit beside me. Me? Yeah. And it's almost like there's two kids, there's a little boy and a little girl sitting here playing. So it's right here in this spot. And there's a woman wandering around who isn't their mother, but is strongly connected to them. And it's almost like, um, sorry, yeah. I'm off. No, I'm gonna turn, sorry. Yeah, yeah no, leave me, I just wanna, let me connect. Okay, why is she having a turn? She's doing, she's doing this to the children. She's, she's comforting the children. It seems like there's a loss of a parent or perhaps both parents. Um, and the children, do you know that absolute innocence that children have, which is why I'm feeling a bit emotional, where they look at someone as if to say, what? They don't, they don't get it. These kiddies don't get it. And this woman is, um, one instant she wants to kill because someone's done mischief to these children's parents, and in the other instance, she wants to protect. Do you know what I mean? Mm. How old are the children? Like, yeah, yeah. The children are very small, five and four, mm -hmm. three. Girl and a boy. Girl and a boy. <clears throat> Time period? Um, probably later 1800s, maybe early 19. I mm -hmm. uh, can't get a surname of the family. And I want to say, I want to say fire, so whether the parents have died in a fire. Okay. I've got the kids again, kind of almost knocking in this, on this door and coming in. Um, but coming in for protection because it feels safe. Now, I'm trying to figure in my head whether that's what they did in life, because someone was in this room. Uh, a figure was in this room, or whether it's um, astral, because there's so much, there's so much activity in the rest of the house that oh, it scares them. Oh really? So I know this. They're not basically. I'm saying here that there's ghosts who are scared of the ghosts. I didn't know that could. Do you know what I mean? No, that's, no, very, strange. that's very strange. It, it, it's almost like they're, they're maybe in different times. But so they're, they're seeing each yeah. other. But they, the kids are, there's something angry in the house that the kids don't like. So somehow this feels like like a, a protected space to them. And any activity in here would be caused by the children? Yeah, I would say so. Oh, I'll use another tactic as kiddies. If you want to come and play, come in here. If you want to feel safe, come in here. Stop. Oh, footprints. It was a load all together, wasn't it? <gasps> oh my god. It's right here. It's right, oh, yeah. here, John. It's right here. Did you hear the whimper? Yeah, I did, I did, I did. Was that what you had there? Just here, right here. Yeah. 
If you need my help, then I can help you if you want to go somewhere else to heaven. If there's something here you don't like, I can help you. Do you want to move on to another room? Yeah. Right, I've got a woman coming up the stairs in a real, a real Mills and Boone frock. She's rushing straight over here and straight out here. Almost straight out here initially. That's the, there's like a rush and she's straight out here up this way. She's either jumping out the window to kill herself, she's dead, or she's pushed out the window. Is that the actual window that you feel she jumped out of or was pushed out of? Um, it actually feels more like a loft door to me than a window. So it feels more like a, it, it, the whole thing is different. It's like a wooden floor with, it's pretty rough and ready, do you know what I mean? And there's, you know, like a barn winch or something over the top of it. I think that there's absolute, uh, there's anguish with this woman. It's kind of like, I can't get to the bottom of it. What is it, what is it, what is it? You all right? I can't get to the bottom of it. It's like, the reason I'm, you know, when I first came in at the Mills and Boone thing, sometimes you say things and then you go back over and you think that there's a romance involved mm -hmm. here. It's unrequited love mm -hmm. or something like that. So she's, she's killing herself because of the loss of a love in her life. Okay. Um, she's got in her arms, this is what she's carrying in her arms, a skeleton. And the skeleton... <sighs> The skeleton's older than she is, someone who's died before her, and she's holding it out to me like this. Mm. And it's the skeleton's lying with its head back, and it's almost like she's got one hand under its pelvis and one hand on its back, and its neck's fallen back. Um, it's a woman, because she's showing me hair. Show me long hair. God, listen to this thumping. And she, she's kissing it. Oh. So she's kissing the skeleton's face. She's kind of, I don't know if she's flipping back on the story or not, but she's beating, she's beating the chest of a man, of a very big man in a, in a uniform. She's hammering his chest. She's actually hammering him like this, because she doesn't want him in. She, it's like she's against the wall and she's beating him like this. She doesn't want his advances and she doesn't want him near her. And it's almost like if I got if I got my arm like that, it's almost like she's he's marching her like that. Oh really? Yeah, so he's marching her around like that. It, they, they sometimes work in pictures which aren't the truth of the thing, they're just the pictures mm. they just give you. She's in a bridal gown, her arms up her back, and she's dragged down the aisle. Oh. So she's obviously been forced to marry. Following David's first impressions, we decided to go to night vision in an attempt to coax more from the night's investigation. Look, it's almost like I can see someone clawing up from the floor to reach me. Oh, God. And it, the energy, the energy is sucking me down. I think it's, um, remember, so she's got this, it, it's bony finger, so it's the it's skeleton. Oh, God. It's the skeleton shape that I'm getting. Um, so the energy that's really coming down me. is the skeleton? Yeah, really making me, it's making me question if these hands are my hands, you know, it's, it's so strong. I can almost feel like the, I can feel the bones in my hands. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, I can feel like my hands want to do that. You're, you're saying you're being drawn down, so what does that mean? It means she wants me here. She wants, she wants, in fact, I'm going to get further down because she... The tapping is she, right in the middle where you are. Can you hear I'm it, John? I can't feel it. <gasps> I can feel it through the floor. I mean, it suggests to me that she was either here between these floorboards or she's right down and I can't, do you know what I mean, what do on you the mean ground? Her body was? Her in body, the, yeah, absolutely. In, under the floorboards? Either there or on the ground directly underneath here. It's almost like she's rising up through the floor. Now, if she's doing that, she's not walking in a doorway. She's coming up through the floor. Do you so know that... What were they, sisters? What were they? They're lovers. 
It feels like they're lovers to me. The, the husband's involved in all of this. She, she's saying to me, a bullet to the back of the head. She's saying a bullet to the back of the head, not even, he didn't manage to even look me in the face. Who is she talking about? I think it's the first one's husband. It's almost like they've been, I don't know if they've been caught. I can't, this energy's amazing. Do you want to move on from here and come back later? I'd like to do more work in here, certainly. Isn't this? Well, well there's one of them is warm. Where? Where? If you put your hand down. There. That's it. Okay. Is that a star or nothing? Yeah. It's a leaf. It looks like a peanut. Okay. There, there's a there's a bit of a stormier energy in here than than so far I've encountered in the house. Um and I know it's obvious we're in a stable, so let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. Mm -hmm. Residual of surprise, surprise horses. Yeah. Um, there's um, there's a strong image of a of a male in here who's looking after them. It's very very strong. Uh, you know, like a horsey kind of man. Do you know what I mean? He lives and breathes and sleeps horses. Right. Okay. There is a kind of leave me alone. Oh, really? You know, there's a kind of like, just leave me alone with this man. Just let me get on with it. Oh, oh. hey, yeah, 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 yeah. That hit me. Is that warm? Is that um, you? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. There you go. Do you have a name with this man? There is another name flying around. I don't, the other name I've got is Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, I can't get his name. It's his, there's something about his eyes that... When he's caught in here, and I think people will see him in here or maybe hear or sense him here, his eyes are red. Oh, that's horrible. That's a that's kind of an astral warning. It's kind of like oh, that's here's really my nasty. eyes. You know, get out my space. We returned to the room where David had first sensed the children and attempted to make contact through a seance. This is not good. No, I'm a little bit concerned. Oh, let's see what you can do. Table shaking. No. Mm. Are you right, Yvette? Yeah. I just felt very, very, very lightheaded then. I thought I was going to faint. If you're a protective force that's using fear to try and warn us, I respect that. But I also want you to respect my rights our rights, everyone here, to know who you are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you right? You're right. <sighs> what was it? Some, I don't know. It, it was weird. It was like something made a noise right by my by this ear. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Cool, my hair. Yeah, my hands just yeah. got freezing cold. You both said it exactly yeah. the same time. Cold draft. Oh, here we go. Ooh. I just... That it cold blast of air right yeah. on my hand. Yeah, we did that. Oh. Oh, my I keep getting someone breathing on my hand. I'm not picking anything up. It, 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 it's there, <coughs> Kieran. Is it cold? Is it? Ice? It's not ice cold, no, but it's like, like that. It's you like that. Kept guessing, don't we? Sadly, nothing further came from our endeavours with the seance. However, the night still had surprises in store as we prepared for our first vigil. Ellen, please, if you're here. Oh. Oh. What the hell was that?
Boys Hall was certainly living up to its paranormal reputation. What else was in store for the most haunted team? I hate opening doors. What the hell was that? Oh! Oh, flipping it! What was that? With David picking up so much astral energy, he led Carl, Kath, Stuart, John and myself in an exploration of the entire house, starting with the upper rooms. What's that? Did you hear that? Yeah. It's like a scratching, wasn't it? Where? That was from out there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was here. It was like, oh, a scratching. It, it was like it's behind here. Is that a cupboard? If I open it this way, then I won't have to look in it. Oh, no, it's sh shut. What's that? The scratch came from here, didn't it, Jeff? It did, yeah. It's like a scratch outside. Oh! Are you alright? Cass? Oh, I didn't, don't think I'm not that over. So I just move on its own? I'd have to, like, really bang into it, wouldn't I? Yeah, you would. Yeah, but if you were walking forward, you could I didn't, I was in this position. I got moved. Oh. Oh, where does that? Trying to get a fix of the rooms before the release, you know, trying to yeah. get in my head. Should we go into, back into this room here? Yeah, I think for me this is where it's more, there's more energy in this part. I am picking up on a name, but I really love to use it, because it's a... Oh, sorry. ..name of a modern lesbian, and I don't know if I'm... No, and I'm, I'm, I'm not being offensive or derogatory in any way, shape or form. Ellen. Like Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, that's right. Is that her name? Yeah, that's one of the names, yeah. So I'm kind of holding back a bit, because it's... Oh, it's here. Oh, my oh, word! The battery's going now. Oh, your battery's going. Yes, it is. And it's just fresh as well, That one's it? full up. Yeah. What, mine's full? Mine's got... When a... you said the name Ellen, it just actually just starts flashing. And that's there starting. There we go, okay. there I've got a bit of... Ellen, if you're here, could you please make yourself known to us? Which one was Ellen? Oh. It seems distant and yet near. Yeah. Mm. She's gone. Which one was Ellen? Oh. Ellen, if you can make another sort of noise, maybe say a word. Can you... Oh. Oh, my... Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Oh. Which one was Ellen? I think she's the one in the gown, just not the skeleton. She's the one that killed herself. The one that flies out this window, yeah. Ellen, so. did you kill yourself? Ellen, make another noise for us, please, sweetheart, please. <gasps> no, we sat outside. No, that, it was outside the room, but it was right That's here. what I mean. It was outside the room. It was on the landing. <gasps> Ellen, thank you so much. I think that's you. The audibles we heard when making contact with the ghost of Ellen were amazing. Would we experience more in the panelled room? Are there any children present, please? Don't be scared. What was that? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoever's tapping, please, can you stop? Thank you. Can you knock twice if you can hear me clearly? Thank you. Are you a woman? Please knock twice. Are we in any danger? Please knock twice for yes, if so. Okay. <clears throat> Can you ask the children? Are there any children present with you now? I want to ask you something, David. Mm. Could you look over here and put your hands round here and mm. the panelling and see if you can pick up on anything? Um. 
Not really, other than the door, but... Uh -huh. The trouble is, because you know the door, if you send someone walking through it, it's, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I've really got from it. Okay. Should we move on? Oh, oh right, hello. What's the matter? Something just stroked my hand. <clears throat> Who's in the room? It's just so hectic around this house, I'm not... There's a really soft touch it's as well. The woman. It's the woman that protects the kids, probably. Is it? It's that. The others wouldn't be so soft. Should we head to another room? Why don't we try the dining room? Yeah, we've not been in there. Dining we? room and cellar? Yeah, let's try the dining room because it's pretty quite active and if we can sit across the tables. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. 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 what was that? I don't know, but it's something bounced oh, off the okay, sofa. What's that? It's a pine cone. Oh, it's a pine cone. Oh, how weird is that? That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. A pine cone? Yeah. I yeah. wonder who threw that. <clears throat> was it the children who threw this? <clears throat> what was that? Behind. What was that? Mm. Was that something went running past? <laughs> what was that? If there are two children here, do you want to play some more games? Was it you who threw something just then? Oh. Thank you. What was it? Where did it go? Is that, is that by your feet, Kath? Anything? It sounded like something down. small, didn't it? It was weird. It felt, sounded like it dropped about here, didn't it? Felt like oh. it rolled a bit, yeah. Can you still hear my voice if you can? Thank you. That's brilliant. I'm just trying to find where they are. I saw them on the door. And another one. Is that behind you, Jeff? Or is it just the floor? I, never heard. I think it's the floor squeaking. That's really warm. Should we go down into the dining room then? Yeah, let's give it a go. Come on then. I hate opening doors. Oh, Stuart, another stone. I know, I've just seen it then. How weird is that? It landed. I think, I think that's landed behind me. Yeah, it... Oh! Oh, flipping it. What was that? Pine cone. <gasps> no way! <laughs> did that, how did that get? That hurt you, that? Yeah, it did. Where did it hit you? Excited by the apparent playfulness of the children, we made our way to the dining room, wondering if we might make the reacquaintance of John, our jovial drinker. Come on, sir, if you're here, wander around, join in. Throw us something. Something personal to you. Please, can you show yourself? Rattle the doors. Oh. What the hell is that? <gasps> it's a coin. What kind of coin? Please say it's old. Please say it's old. Looks old. What is, is it? it? <gasps> oh, oh my. Is it warm or cold, Carl? Cold. Oh my, that's amazing. What is it? Can I just. I'm sorry. It's on the light on. It's on the other side, come. <gasps> Can't even make it out. That's the king's. It's the, it's the king's the twelfth. Head. Twelfth. Oh my. That's thank you, time. thank you, thank you, thank you. <gasps> that is amazing. Thank you so much. Who threw the coin? We need to know who's here. I think it would be him that threw the coin. Did you say his name? Who did you say his name was in here? Was it John? John, have, do you like to have a drink? Is that not twice for yes, John? Do you like a drink? Okay. Are you happy here? Okay. Okay. You sound very happy. Just sounds like he's dancing. He mm. does. Because it's in time. It's almost like a beat. Yeah. Mm. It is like a beat. You're yeah. Right. Why don't you get on dance with him? Right, you ready, John? See if you can copy my footsteps. You ready? Ready? <gasps> Thank you! You're brilliant! I love you! 
<laughs> Shall we do it again? Right, see if you can copy this one. You ready? <laughs> How cool is oh, that? Mental. This man is amazing. After the impressive discovery of the old coin, what more could possibly occur at Boys Hall? If you want us out, do something to push us out. Our investigation of Boys Hall continued. In the panelled room, Kieran set up a scrying experiment with Ian as its main focus, whilst Carl, John, David and myself returned to the stables, the same scene that had earlier seen stones thrown in our direction. It smells different in here now, doesn't it? No, it smells kind of antiseptic and kinky. Yeah, it does a bit. Doesn't it? Mm. Go on, David, call out. Thomas, if you're here, please make yourself known. Holy shit in a stick! Okay, that was too bad. Sorry, excuse my French. Okay. All right, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Holy! <laughs> Where'd he come from? I was going to check how much one I was there. <clears throat> Is anyone in here? No, but this is the thing. You will sit there, and over the course of a few minutes, your eyes will become accustomed to the dark, right? And you will start to be able to see the outline of your face, right? Okay. Right. And the idea of scrying is that you're going to look at your face, try and look into the eyes, but also just see your face, and you're meant to be able to see the face of. The spirit that's associated with the place. Oh, right. Okay. So often people see kind of an older version, you know, an old face. Right. After a while. You need to give it at least a few minutes before your eyes. And don't worry if you can't see it in detail. That's not the point. <laughs> what? Right. I just, before, as you were explaining, I just um, saw a light on my pop up. Yeah, you said them down. And then something prodded me on the side. Thomas, if you're there and you're throwing things, thank you. Could you do something else? Let us know you're here. He wants us to get out. Yeah, if you want us out, do something to push us out. Oh, what? That's, that's that not... was right over there. If you want us out, scare us proper. Let's see those red eyes. No, don't say that. Yeah, I see a couple of red eyes from somewhere. Can I, can I say if I think his face is changing as well? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. To me, he's looking more like a girl. What? I don't know what it was, just as soon as I started concentrating, I just, I just saw an outline of a, uh, a, a two eyes and a, a nose. It was really clear there for a second. Yeah. But it just made me jump back. Yeah. Who's tapping? Oh! Ow! That hit me, Ow! That hit me in the face. Shit, that got me right at the top of the head. That hit me right underneath my eye. Oh, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right, but it was a stone, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's hit, it, I think it, did it bounce off you and hit me, or was I got a separate one? No, it, I think we got a separate one. <laughs> if it was a stone, it wasn't someone gone. Hey. No, 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 it was definitely a, a stone. Can you make a noise, Thomas? Can you make a noise, a whining noise? That we can all hear. I just heard, a, I actually heard a noise then. Did you? That we can all hear. I just heard a, I actually heard a noise then. Did you? Try the whistle thing, Carl. 
Probably if um, if you're here and you want us to go, we will go. Can I ask you to do something for us? Could you, um, if you just whistle and return to my whistle, um, we'll go. That was there. He just wants us to, I mean, we've had so much <coughs> happening, I just think, I don't know, he just wants to be left alone, and we, we promised him, and I think, I don't know, I just think... Let's go then. Is, do you agree or not? I oh, know, I absolutely do agree, I think we've got to respect yeah. whoever's here. Come on, we did it. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. We're going Thank you. Now. What was it? That f***ing brushed past me as it fell down. Can you... Get, are you all right, John? I'm shot. Can I... In fact, can I you felt it. I camera? felt it come past me. I just want, I just want to see how heavy it is. Jeez. You know what that was, wasn't it? That was get out and no, stay f f now. Yeah. F off. yeah. After an incredibly eventful night of shocks and surprises, I asked Dr. Kieran O'Keefe for his thoughts on our investigation. Oh, Boys Hall was a fascinating location to investigate. At one point, there was a vigil conducted in the stables, and as the group were leaving, a door appeared to fall on one of the members of the crew. <laughs> you could interpret this as paranormal if you wanted to. However, there's no assessment of how precariously balanced the door was at the point when the group left. So in this particular case, I think there's probably a natural explanation for what happened there. Aside from all the usual auditory phenomena, such as taps and knocks, at one point, an object appeared to a port as if from nowhere. Rattle the doors. Oh. oh. What the hell is that? Now, in this particular circumstance, when you're in a haunted location and an object appears, whether it's a stone or a coin or any other small object, it's not a controlled environment. It's very difficult to tell if the source of it is normal or paranormal. What makes this particular object of interest is that it was an ancient coin. It's difficult to tell from the coin what date it is and where it originates. And what makes it most fascinating is the fact that it's the sort of coin that would be difficult to obtain. At this point, we haven't verified exactly what period it's from, but what we can be sure is that it's not a coin from Boys Hall, and so it makes this a little bit more evidential than the normal object apports that we do get on most haunted investigations. Since this programme was filmed, the coin has been analysed and has been authenticated as a fifth impression from James I's reign. Boys Hall had been all it promised and more, and none of us would easily forget the events of the night we spent there. Until next time, sleep tight.